I should have done it beforehand, but I didn't want to do it as you were going. So we'll do that. Well, thank you for sharing that. Let's see here. Um, on the list. Chill. Chill, baby. Okay. Um. Okay, here we go. This is called Take Off My Skin. I am so hungry. Today I noticed sallow in my cheeks, deeper than before. I'm trying to eat, but everything tastes terrible. A bubble works at my throat as I force myself to swallow, even though it doesn't want to. Is this the last part where even my body refuses to be fed? Refuses to be human. I feel stuffed into this sagging form like the alien in Men in Black, wearing human skin. My gauges swinging back and forth as if I'm permanently in the Bermuda Triangle. This everyday world is my Bermuda Triangle. And you all walk around with your absurdities and narrow extremes that you claim are normality while I spend every day narrowly escaping a world that does not make sense to me, a people that does not make sense to me, a body that doesn't make sense to me. When can I take off my skin and exit this twilight zone and emerge from this cloud into the aerospace that is big enough to hold me, an expanse that creates calm for even the wildest storm and the biggest planes to turn and spin because there are no boundaries to cross no walls to run into, no density to fight against or intensity to flee from. It is causing me to implode. Not even with fuel can I refill myself now, and my cheeks are beginning to sallow. Nice. How was that, reading that? Um, you mean like, what do you mean? Like, how did it feel reading it? Um, I, I felt a little stiff. I'm a little anxious tonight, but um, no, you I really like that one. I didn't have to edit it very much. Nice. Nice. That was really good. Thanks. Thank you for sharing. All right. Uh, Bree, do you have anything you want to share? Sure. But first, can I ask what happens with the recording? Um, oh, I'm not muted. Oh, yeah. Um, it just goes on my YouTube channel. Okay. Is that okay or is that not okay? If it's not okay, then that's cool and I'll stop it. I'm going to say it's okay. I'm okay. going to read. I'm okay. I'm reading something that I just started today. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not done, but I thought it would be good to like read it out loud to work through it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hit it. Um. <laughs> And I'm also anxious, so you're not alone, chill baby. <laughs> this is called Fuck My Drag. We time traveled for the first time ever this week when it was revealed that 14 states filed bills that could ban drag, including sneaky ass language that would also target trans people, non-binary people, gender non-conforming people, and anyone else who doesn't conform to the binary of male and female. For the first time in human history, entire communities collectively experienced a jump in our perceived timeline, flashing back to decades not too long ago, decades that made up a majority of the 20th century, with rules like the three-piece law, where anyone could be arrested for wearing less than three pieces of clothing deemed suitable for their assigned sex. They'd be charged with sexual deviancy. RuPaul says some shit like, if you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you going to love somebody else? And it's got me thinking that that's exactly what the fuck is wrong with everybody who thinks they hate us enough to eradicate us. They'd self-destruct if they were to be rigorously honest about how much they actually hate themselves. So it's projected onto whoever they deem their opposite. Spoiler alert, there is no opposite because the binary does not exist. If you can't hate yourself, then you sure as hell are going to have to hate somebody else. 
They think they hate us because we refuse to hide, refuse to conform, refuse to stay silent. They think they hate us because we live in a realm of authenticity that just doesn't look like theirs. We paint with more than just the colors of the rainbow, unleashing multitudes of intricate hues that come with new language. We've unlocked secrets of the universe that they try to keep shut, and we scream these hidden truths to anyone who will listen. Gender systems are a result of colonization that we do not accept. Gender never has and never will be contained. Gender is nothing and everything that we want it to be. I bet what they hate the fucking most is that we're closer to their God without even really trying. I mean, it's those assholes who hate us that put us in this position in the first place. We only fight evil because there's evil to be fought. We only act like angels because we're the ones who take care of us first. We only love unconditionally because that's what we seek for ourselves. Sure. That's what I have to love. That's awesome. Thank you so much for that. I just saw that you said that in the chat, so I apologize for that. It got a glare here, so I can't really see that. No, that's awesome. Fucking hell. No, I feel you. I feel you. Good Lord, man. <sighs> All right. Um, let's see here. Um, Jens, you want to try? Sure. Here, here's the I'm floor. also anxious. It's yours. Oh, yeah, you're anxious you. too? Yeah, I am. And I, I sort of, uh, like, poetry doesn't really help. Because <laughs> it, it sort of feeds uh, more emotions into you. Uh, I am a Swedish, for those of you who didn't already know that. So I am, it's a quarter past two at night here. Uh, and so I have uh, tried to translate a part of a poem uh, into English to, to the best of my ability. And it is like the, it's a very long poem, but it's like the, a midsection and the ending that I wanted to read. Uh, and it's called The uh, Bortsprungna uh, Benet, which means uh, the runaway leg. Uh, and it goes like this. <clears throat> Uh, my leg has met someone else. My leg got tired of me sitting all day writing shopping lists but never going shopping. My leg wants me to dissolve the tissue that holds my other body parts in place. I wonder what you would say if you saw me then. My leg has had a sexual awakening nearing the winter of its life. My leg has a new, more adventurous lifestyle with many exciting acquaintances, but few real friends. My leg simply cannot understand how it could waste the best years of its life on me. My leg denies me. My leg insists that it existed before I was born. My leg could tell early on what would be the cause of our separation. My leg had been yearning and I was the first thing to come along. My leg only loved me as, a, as long as I loved it in the way it wanted to be loved. My leg is swimming in a sea of worn out jock straps, but only when nobody's watching. My leg is of the opinion that I should blame myself. My leg does not want to experience me ever again. My leg is so self-assured that it does not understand what I'm talking about when I'm talking about my leg. My leg is completely cut off from other people's preconceived notions. My leg has heard among liberals that you can achieve anything, you just have to want it. So that's what my leg is doing, just wanting my leg has a hormone imbalance and sweats uncontrollably every so often. My leg goes around telling people that I cut off my own leg just to show my other body parts what happens if you have an attitude. 
my leg is a sound signal, a radio wave, a post package, an evil rumor. My leg is wearing a pantsuit in the coffee room at work late one summer. My leg could have done with a vacation from its vacation. Ha ha ha, my leg is at an office party having a panic attack in front of the bathroom mirror. A tile on the wall says, call me, along with a phone number. My leg writes its own number on the wall. My leg has started an intense love affair with a married colleague, and everyone knows about it, but no one says anything but hides their envy under impenetrable layers of contempt. My leg's mistress has already left her husband, but my leg has cut all ties. My leg has made itself unavailable. There is a wire going through my leg, a steel wire from its foot and out the bone. My leg claims that it's painful to hang like that. In reality, though, it has never felt more alive, never before at home in itself. Not like this. The last time I saw my leg, I was downtown. I walked up to it and I tried to look pleading. My leg did not run away, but leaned in as if it wanted to whisper something. No, I don't want your weed. Everyone around us could hear it. Before it disappeared around the corner, it looked at me defiantly or perhaps cautiously. That was the last time I saw my runaway leg. Thank you. Thank you, man. Um, so do you want who who's the author of that original piece? Uh it's actually me and that was a bit unclear oh uh, you actually know. wrote it yeah i realized oh i thought you were I, just I was reading like i don't yeah i, I realized as i was reading I, I i didn't know how i presented this stuff but... <laughs> <laughs> no that's awesome dude as someone whose leg is trying to get the fuck away from them right now i can fucking relate oh oh yeah shit. the leg theme yeah yeah, we have leg themes going on here. Okay, yeah. so um, thanks for that, though. So next, let's do um, Jeff and then TT, and then I'll throw one in, too. So Jeff, is your sound better? unmuted yeah i can't hear you jeff um tt you want to go ahead and read one for us yeah cool man <clears throat> cool i'm not i'm not nervous at all I don't have any anxiety. No, I feel all your pain. I'm trying to work on breathing through this stuff. Um, but yeah, here we go. We'll see if it works. Uh, this one's called That One Neighbor. Occasionally, the woman who lives on the other side of my bedroom wall will catch me outside alone. I scan my mind and my surroundings for a means of escape. There is none. It's as though she's planned it. It's a perfect ambush. She looks up to me from her five foot frame and says, usually something to the effect of, I'm eight years sober. And I stand there for an endless moment, doing my best not to stare at her tiny wrinkled lips curling aggressively over toothless gums, looking into those cataract blue squinted eyes, thinking about how the eight years sober may have come about 40 years too late 
and wondering how a sober person finds themselves absolutely alert at 4 a.m. and banging on the shared wall next to my bed, screeching obscenities and apparently wrestling some enormous creature who must be wearing a suit of lead and shoes adorned with bells that clang like empty metal dishes atop a floor made of glass. And I wonder who she's captured held hostage in her small home that no one aside from herself ever seems to enter or leave and why this hostage only ever decides to scream for help when the world is dead asleep and if it's this hostage who is helping the shrunken old woman move boatloads of furniture across that screeching yellow floor during the time of night wherein only predators and other malevolent entities roam the lonesome dark I wonder if it's always the same nightgown or a different nightgown of the same design that she is always and only seen wearing. The one with the frilled collar and large sagging cloth area where I assume breasts are meant to go but that seem to hold none and nothing breast nor otherwise. Thinking of how the nightgown swallows her legs whole like the hungry mouth of a huge snake and how it sways like a tent in the wind as she saunters slowly from her apartment to the mailbox and back and back and back again. Like she takes one letter at a time or is waiting the delivery of some drug that she desperately needs. Or perhaps she needs sunlight but only in parking lot length spaces of time. I wonder, too, at the bulging varicose vein on her left leg, the one that creeps up behind the knee and can be seen only when she steps up the curb from the parking lot to the mailboxes, the way it slithers down from beneath the long yellowed nightgown, showing itself for only a moment, but looking ferocious and ripe to burst. The blue has become purple and it stands garish against the pale leg, gray-white as an old egg. I think... One day it will burst as she steps up the curb, and the absolute pressure of the large mangled thing will spray coagulated black blood with such force that it sweeps her off of her feet and paints the mailboxes a new shade of death. I think all of these things and more, but respond with something to the tune of, Wow, that's incredible. That takes courage. And you're a hero. What a beautiful accomplishment you've managed to... Oh. What, what? And I look abruptly to the other side of the parking lot, responding to some helpful distraction, wholly unreal, not actually there. And I put all of my faith into her potential blindness as I inform her while running away that my friend or my wife or my dog or some other poor soul is in desperate need of my immediate attention. I have no way of knowing if she buys it. I only know that the night time noises take on exceptionally violent tones of murder, death, and disaster any time after I escape in such a way. Might be time for a new technique. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay, let's see here. Jeff, how's it going? You got audio yet? Do I? Yes. Do you, do you Yes. Nice. Excellent. Yeah, I, I had to um drop out and then rejoin the Zoom, and that seemed to get things all sorted. But yeah, I can I got a. I have a poem for you here. This one is called Subliminal. The letters on the screen are inhabited by people who want to kill you. They are fluorescent bulbs trapped in the walls of a maze shaped to spell freedom. After being fed six pills every three hours for nine weeks, the letter people ate through the walls and hurled themselves into the space between the text. Their true goal is to direct, but the pharmaceutical regimen freedom put them on left them susceptible to believing they must be standing in a pool of your blood to make a dollar. They think love has a shape, a color, a required equipment list. A representative is asking you to lie on the couch. A profile has been created for you. 
you will be prompted to select a legacy administrator. Press spacebar to continue. That one is subliminal. Nice, man. Thank you. Thank Let's you. see here. Um, Shocky, do you want to read anything? Uh, sure. Is there like a theme or anything? No. There seems to be one, but there wasn't supposed to be one. <laughs> uh yeah i can read something uh this is a, a piece i've been working on today, so it's not like fully finished but today i stared into a bottle of antidepressants head bent like a prayer begging each dream in the form of a circle to take the pain away i've never been a fan of the wizard of oz but i've always wanted to be the tin man I've convinced myself the yellow brick road is just a back road covered in empty pill bottles. I have no interest in the Emerald City, or love for that matter. What they don't tell you is after the Tin Man got a heart, he fell in love with the can opener. I cut him open, cut him deep, and left him empty. You could find him in a recyclable bin, swiping right on anything, promising to give him purpose. Tinder is a good name for a can drive. And love is a non-perishable item even hungry people live, leave on the shelf. Nobody really wants it, but they pass it along for charity. So I've been popping pills instead. It's very cool. Thank you. Fell in love with a can opener, yeah. All right. Um, let me... Go ahead and throw one in here real quick. Um, this one is from the Your Mom book. And um, I wasn't going to put this one in where it is, but um, somebody was telling me that I should open the book with this. So here it is. It's called Hang In There. I lost 74 bucks at the track today, but I'm not in jail. A pane of glass shattered in the window but I'm not in jail. Won't be able to buy groceries for two more days, but I'm not in jail. It's only 8 p.m. and I'm drinking the last glass of my wine, but I'm not in jail. My utilities paid apartment decided it's not utilities paid anymore, but I'm not in jail. The poetry isn't selling like it used to, but I'm not in jail. A lot of fucked up things, even worse, much worse than stated above, could happen to you. And as long as you can say, but I'm not in jail after it, everything is going to be okay. Like the cat poster says, hang in there, baby. So that one is that. Now, um... As far as like the workshop portion of this goes, um, I'm actually, I had something in mind, but since a lot of us have been talking about being anxious and um, anxiety and things of that nature, and kind of what I went through earlier today, um, I think it would be fun to do a little exercise about that stuff. So if you can, and if this isn't like triggering for you or anything like that, what I would like to do is have us think about the things that it, that it is that kind of triggers our anxiety. And as we think about that, the things that make us anxious, the things that um, kind of push us over the edge to write about how all of us feel about that. So like how, what, what our feet are doing, what our hands are doing, what our mouth is doing, what our eyes are doing, what we're smelling, what we're feeling, what we're touching. Looking at what the thing is that is causing us the anxiety and then how we react to it. And then if you are capable of talking about the things that help you cope with that stuff, and to try to get out of that, that would be something really, really cool for us to do right now. So if you guys are up for it, if you want to take like just 10 minutes and start 
making it and even if it's like a list form kind of thing and then as the list goes hopefully you'll be able to kind of explode onto the page into all sorts of stuff there so let's go ahead and take like 10 minutes and just like burst out all over everything right now <laughs> so about all of our deep dark shit let's do that in a real happy way okay and i will see you guys in 10 minutes
righty. Pencils down, everyone. Let's do this thing. <clears throat> so um, if you guys did it, great. If you didn't do it, that's fine too. Um, and if you want to share what you wrote, um, when I come to you, just say that you want to or not. Um, I'll go ahead and do mine in here real quick. Uh, let's see. My breath gets short. I'm constantly looking behind me. It was just a phone call. But now my chest hurts. My feet hurt. I can feel pain in my knuckles. Why is my breath so short? It was just a knock at the door, but no one's there. Who was it? I can feel the blood pumping in my brain, my heart and my throat, my dry tongue trying to make words to make audible sense out of this feeling. I focus on my feet. The tile is freezing cold beneath. <clears throat> I listen to the air being sucked in through my nostrils. I can feel it feel filling up my lungs. People are assholes outside. That's okay. They're outside. I am inside. The deadbolt is my friend. The deadbolt protects me. I need to put the deadbolt on my Christmas card list. An Amazon gift card, maybe. <clears throat> Wine. Wine makes all this stuff seem petty and stupid. Glass number two, and I've completely forgotten about all that shit. Bottle number two, I've completely forgotten about me. Soon my eyes will close and we'll have dreams about being a hitman, fucking strangers, or being worried that I bought a dog. But then I'll wake up and just want coffee and a piss. All right. So there was that. So let's see. Thank you. Um, Mindy, would you like to take a stab at this? Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anxiety. My head is full of cataclysmic endings, assuming the worst. Public speaking or just talking to a new friend can send me over the edge. A crowded room is unbearable. A noisy party is the worst. I hide in the corner or stick to a friend like a shield. My worst anxiety comes from the unexpected. A loss a change, a sudden disturbance in my perfectly quiet life. So I stick to the well-worn paths in my existence, full of books, writing, and cats. Any adventures must be planned in advance. Panic attacks from confrontation, from a heartbreaking loss, from a bad day at work, or even trying something new. Heart racing, can't breathe, I think I'm dying. I'm sure that I am. There you go. Nice. Thank Feel you. that, dude. It's it's all it's always that I sure that I, I'm sure that I am thing. That's that's the kicker all the fucking time, dude. Ah, oh, we don't know shit. We're so stupid. Our bodies can take care. Uh, okay, let's see. Chill, baby. Um, I've been I've been writing poems about this all week. <laughs> um, and so what I did instead is um, I wrote I wrote still a poem about triggers and anxiety. But um, uh, do you want me to read the one that's on topic? I have one here, or I can read the one I wrote whatever you feel like doing okay all right i'm gonna read the one i wrote then um my dad just texted i know he has just as much trauma as i do i know he is just as neurodiverse as i am even blindly so i cannot commiserate with him about it because it is too triggering 
So we sit every month at a, di at a diner's table with shaky hands on our guns, trying not to activate our triggers. Neither of us wants to do the other in, though we're both afraid that we might. I'm always anxious about seeing my dad, while seeing my dad, after seeing my dad. His voice gunshots with his adrenaline. I flinch at each word. His story is not as dangerous, but his passion covers his message like pistol smoke. I cannot see anything sometimes because of the pistol. We do not want to threaten each other. We want to join forces, but our mechanics can set off like a backyard fireworks explosion. I come from him, so it makes sense. It is reasonable, though I still do not know if he sees this reason. So every month I continue to stand off in a duel with my father, where we try to find each other in the morning fog, waving our hands about, talking, and hoping we do not fire accidentally on the one person we love the most as we have done many, many times before. Damn. Dude, the gun stuff, that was heavy. That was great. That was really great. Thank you for that. Let's see, uh, Bree. Okay. Uh, let's see. My cat is in the way. Uh, he asked what might be causing my anxiety and I'm just like what doesn't sometimes it feels like the final frontier of figuring out this whole life thing that is until another circumstance rears its head and my nervous system has even more to worry about I thought I figured it out when I got the right meds I thought I figured it out when I got sober I thought I figured it out when I planned my escape from my corporate nine to five. I thought I figured it out when I found God in herbs and affirmations. Then I lost my job and then COVID happened and my cat died and my roommates didn't know how to just wear a fucking mask. Then I got sick for a year. I have lupus. And in case you haven't already guessed it, there's no worse time to find out that your immune system is fucked than in the midst of a global pandemic. Thank you for that. Like whenever anyone talks about how I thought I had this figured out, I thought I had this figured out. It's always like, I'm like, God damn, dude, that never goes away. No matter how old you ever get, dude, trying to figure shit out and thinking that you did it. <clears throat> Thank you for sharing that. Um, Jens. Right. <clears throat> uh, I, I'm actually going to read a uh, poem from, from last time. Uh, last time you did this. Um, because I watched it afterwards and uh, I sort of did all the prompts. Uh, Matt, your, your uh, video is turned off. Do you want that? or? Uh, oh, no. Thank you. Yeah. Hello. Hey, hey, everybody. I've been making yeah. faces and doing all sorts of like really charismatic oh. shit. And you guys have been missing all of it. Oh. Oh, well. No, that's no, cool, back. dude. Do do what you got to do. Like my scary yeah. ass face is looking at all you guys and I'm like saying nice stuff. That's horrible. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, it was, <laughs> was a bit of a mismatch. Uh, but um, yeah, but it's it's uh, it's kind of because of the theme that you, you chose for us now because I wanted, um, I sort of uh, recoiled like away from it and <laughs> and uh, I quite like this uh, uh, the poem that I uh, that was the result of uh, a prompt that you you gave us last time or the people who were present and it was you told them to to imagine themselves as kids again I think and looking down at their hands I think that was the the prompt and yeah 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 and this was the result okay. hands 
skin like seafood, every finger a shrimp, underneath, grass, sunlight, standing not yet tall but quite safe, lightning had struck the tree by the house, the dog leash had melted into a stick, the lightning had crept into the house, you could trace its path in the ceiling, black burns. The tree lived, because by the time I was born, it still stood there. The cherries from it stained my feet. I ate them, and the days were so long that I never saw darkness for months. Thank you. Thank you, man. Let's see here. Um, we got TT next. All right. <clears throat> okay. I only feel anxiety. And maybe that's the truth of it. Maybe this acidic plumage rising from my rib cage and tickling my heart with the fiery tongue of its angry flame is all I'm ever really feeling. I asked my brother what a Xanax was supposed to feel like. I couldn't get a high off of them, I said. It's not a feeling, he responded. It's the absence of a feeling. And that made sense. Maybe you don't notice the noise that's always been in your ear, screaming and screaming, screaming, screaming. Maybe I can't tell you what my tongue tastes like because every other taste is measured against the taste of my tongue. Maybe it's not normal to stay equipped at all times with a slew of psychoactive consumables. Maybe the ache of nothing and for no reason isn't the shared experience. That's it. Very nice, man. Thank you for sharing. Let's see what we got here now. We got Jeff. Hey, so, um, yeah, so I, I good prompt. I, I was able to write something that's not a full poem, but it's, it's on its way. So I, I, but I, I wrote about like anxiety, about anxiety, but I, I wrote, um, I, I, um, talked about it as having no more F's when all my F's are gone, but, uh, <laughs> it's, it's about a, it's on topic. But I have no more F's to give. I buy all the coffee so my body can outrun my brain. When I have no more Fs to give, I take my dog for a walk and let him take a dump on City Hall. When all my Fs are gone, I turn the light off in the factory of Fs. We won't need them where we're going. When all my Fs are gone, I stock up on things like liquid skin. Because you never know when you could run into the apocalypse. When all my Fs are gone, filed in the library. That's that's where I, that's what I got to. <laughs> that's awesome, man. Oh, it's really good. Thank you for sharing that, man. Uh, Shaki, you got something? Um, I can read, uh, something I had about anxiety, but I didn't write anything. Okay. Uh, it's a short piece um, called Cheshire Cat. Uh, it's that damn cat again, a figment of my imag or abomination. My anxiety popping up when I least expect it with riddles I cannot solve. The cat disappears, but the fur remains. Layered thick across my spaces, cat scratches across my arm, fade over time. My body does everything to reject you. I sneeze and hope someone's blessings could banish you. 
if only for a moment, a brief stitch in time, I have to remind myself I'm not crazy. My reality is just different. My reality is a black hole where nothing escapes these walls. I call it safety. You call it introversion, but a rose by any other name is just as sweet. Damn. Like how it went in the ending. Good job. Thank you so much for that. Okay, let's see here. Um, so now, I mean, you guys, if you've been through any of these things with me before, you know that I like to do like an internal thing and an external thing and usually the external things to try to lighten the fucking mood because everything got really fucking serious and shit around here. So um, we're going <laughs> to we're going to um, kind of do that. We're going to do that here. So now this one, this is going to be more fun and it's going to be a lot shorter. OK, so we're going to have five minutes here. But what I want you guys to do, this is a completely external observation kind of thing here. And the prompt is, it fell from the sky. It could be a raindrop, a person, an airplane, a photocopier. It could be anything you want. Whether it was the first thing that just popped into your head when I said it fell from the sky, or something you're going to think about over the next 30 seconds to try to come up with something. Let's go ahead and kind of jam something out that fell from the sky and I will see you guys in five minutes and this time I'll remember to turn my camera back on.
All righty. <clears throat> Hopefully, that was a little more fun than the last one. So let's see here. Um, I kind of um, ended up doing more um, dealing with my own shit. <laughs> okay, so this is what I got here. She fell from the sky. It was more like four floors, but still, the people below, to the people below, it must have seemed a big deal. I just saw her as she left, left the fourth floor, through the floor-to-ceiling window. She had told me that I was overweight, but I but didn't notice that I had lost 30 pounds since my last visit. She told me that I was a smoker. I knew that. In fact, I was the one who informed her of this. She said it was a blood clot and that I needed to go to the ER. I insisted it wasn't. I asked her for the x-ray. She said I would get one at the ER. <clears throat> I told her I wasn't going to the ER. She said that she had to say it because she was covering her ass. She said a lot of things in just a few minutes that pissed me off. I am not a doctor, but I also didn't throw that woman through the window on the fourth floor to the ground below. I am not a scientist. She is not a detective. She isn't much of anything now. All right. So that was my little fun moment there. Um, Mindy, would you like to read what you did? Sure. It fell from the sky. I'll never forget when it fell from the sky like manna from heaven. Everything I knew I needed. An opportunity fell right in my lap a chance to make a change for the better. I had been searching so long with no progress, it seemed a lost cause, though I'll never forget when it fell from the sky in abundance like a storm. Very nice. Thank you for sharing. A chill baby. Okay, so I somehow managed to still make it really esoteric and dark. Are you ready? Okay. Um, something just fell from the sky. Did you see it? It was me. I was meant to rearrange the star patterns, but I hit this planet instead. It was so dark, I did not see it in my way. Now I see the darkness. It is not hatred, as you might think. It is not lies or deception. Illusions are common in the astral world. Hate is just a color and a vibration. Ask Mars about it. It was because of its chaos. So many going in different directions. So many living distinctly different lives. There is no unity here. I feel this is seen as fear, but fear not my race. Chaos is a reflection of the void where all things exist and where all things are possible. And that's all, that's how far I got. Very good, very good, thank you. Bree, would you like to go? Sure. It took me a while to think of something, but I did. My last living memory of my grandma, Rose, is when a seagull took a midair shit that landed right in her lap. Before she could gather the energy to sigh, my Aunt Rosie yelled, that's good luck, and, they, and patiently helped her towards the lake to splash her legs. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Let's see. Jens, would you like to try it? Sure. Um, I don't know if you can, if the, the theme is, uh, is very obvious in this one, but I'll give it a try. <laughs> don't you have a name? He says and makes an effort to smile. It only looks like the remains of a smile that has already faded. 
he tries not to fixate me too intently. That much I understand. You might as well not have a face. He has raised his hand, which is now so close to my face that I almost can't see him. I'm not quite sure what he's doing. I grab his wrist, but immediately I grab it more firmly and push it out of my sight. For a brief moment, I could not move it. He is like one of us. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you for doing it. Let's see here. TT, you're up. Okay. When it fell from the sky, I was daydreaming, of course, when it hit, walking down a busy street lined with cafes, barber shops, and stores, when it bounced off of my head. It knocked the thoughts right out of me, fell to the sidewalk and burst into clone of baby, fresh, white out. I was minding my bit when I felt it ding, skip, flop to the floor. My head went silent for one. When I looked, a dry old piece of dog shit, dehydrated, all the moisture gone, albino white and void crumbling like sand in the palm of my hand. Why'd I pick this shit up? I thought as I put it in my pocket and continued on walking. It's always best when a poem ends with you putting dog shit in your pocket. I love it. That was great. <laughs> it was I always really good. <laughs> I always end up doing that. Uh, so good. Thank you for that, man. Thank you. Uh, Jeff, you want to go? Yeah, I get something here from that. Just a, another part of a poem. It's not the full thing, but I'm, I'm going to work on both of these. I like, I like where they're headed. When it fell from the sky, my brother said UFOs come from underwater. When it fell from the sky, my father said when people see UFOs, they are really seeing experimental aircraft. When it fell from the sky, the cashier at 7-Eleven said it was a spy balloon dropping Bluetooth microphones into our car windows. That that's where I that's where I left off. But <laughs> that's awesome, <laughs> man. <clears throat> I dig that first line especially. Like when it falls from the sky, they come up from out of the water. Like I like the <laughs> the parallel there. That's good. Thanks. Uh Shocky, you're up. Okay. Um, all right. I found a black and blue heart on the corner of stupid and lonely. I could tell it fell from the sky by the scent of ozone on its smile. Have you ever tried to convince a heart it belonged to an angel once? It says it saw me fight too many demons for that to be true. I asked it to explain the difference between Icarus and Lucifer if we're all fallen angels. She wasn't looking for a metaphor. Crutches, maybe, but she doesn't plan on staying. Never planned on kissing this earth wholly. Couldn't convince her otherwise. That's awesome. Very good. Thank you. <clears throat> so that was a lot of fun. I'm glad that, I mean, it didn't super end up in um, a lot. I, I should have thought about a, a better prompt that couldn't end in someone like falling out of a window or falling from the sky or something like that if i was trying to lighten the mood a little bit it should have been like dog shit in the pocket like i should have started with that all right so <clears throat> now it is time for the hunt so in case you didn't do the scavenger hunt last time let me explain how this is going to go i'm going to pick up my phone i'm going to open google i'm going to either start typing like last time i hit a and we got amazon so this time i'm going to open up the phone hit a letter any letter see what comes up 
And whatever that word is, I'll tell you guys what the word is. And you guys have to dig through all your poems real quick or just do control F if you're that clever. And the first person to get to a poem that has the word in it that we're talking about, um, just start reading your poem and then you will win a prize. A prize. And it's probably just another one of my chat books. Let's be fair here. We're not we're not doing crazy stuff. Just needed to make sure that my microphone was actually on and you guys were just nodding at my head bobbing over here. Good Lord. <laughs> All right. So I got Google open. It's taking a minute for some reason. Okay. How come nothing's loading? All right. You guys have all the time in the world right now. Here we go. I'm going to type a letter. These are awful. Hang on. Let me see. What do we have here? Oh, we'll do that. Okay. Are you ready? Your word is micro. Micro. Oh no, you're out. Oh, you're like I just write big stuff. I don't. I don't write nothing <laughs> little. <laughs> I'm macro, Matt. <laughs> I only write macro. Let's see. I don't what? even know. I think. Oh, just kidding. You do got something? No, no, never mind. It was okay. a joke. Bad joke. Oh, that's all right. Bad jokes are the best. Let me see here. I don't know if I have anything. And if we can't find it, if nothing works, then we will do something else. Oh, yeah, I'm not going to read that one. Um, can it be part of another word? Yes, it most definitely can. Oh, that's a different story. Yeah, I got one if it could be part of another word. Okay, so apologies for that one, guys. If you guys, let, let's let's try this. If you guys have one where the word is a part of another word, then definitely we can do that. So, Shaki, if you have one, go ahead and start it. Okay. Uh, the word was microplastic. Um, it's a constant struggle. They feed they feed them foods that make them sick, even though they know better. Know that some foods can be medicine, but they lower the cost of the sickening foods and provide low wages. Raise the cost of health care to keep the people sick, believing health is still within their reach if they just made better decisions. If they just worked better, if they took the matter into their own hands, instills the guilt in places the blame on the victim instead of the system. However, in feudal times, the breast crops had to be sold, leaving the farmer with the worst diet. It's been said, we are what we consume, a society of microplastics self-proclaiming ourselves kings, as if this false royalty will save us, forgetting even the monarchy would let us eat cake to survive if it could. Boom. Very nice. Anybody else have a micro? poem <laughs> did you not get yours shocky did you not get the chat book uh i haven't been to my mailbox i was just talking shit oh, okay because someone um who got an order on my last thing i shipped out didn't get theirs either and so i don't oh. know if i need to go yell at the post office annex thing that i use uh, i'll check it i'll check it this weekend okay, you're, you're, fine, you're fine yeah does anybody else have a micro something somewhere you don't have to send me another one though <laughs> I, 
I'm going to send you whatever I want, whenever I want. I'm just oh. kidding. <laughs> I want to send you so much stuff. It's just going to drive you crazy. I'm going to send you all my junk mail and I'll put it in a nice little envelope and send it and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> and then recipes and comic strips, all sorts of comic stuff. Strips. Oh man, I miss people sending me comic strips. That was the best. <laughs> all right. Let me see. I think I have one in here. Let me see. I just had it and it went somewhere else. What one was this? That's pretty long. Do I have one that is not that? Oh, that's very long. Uh, okay, I don't remember what this is from, but I'll read this one. It's called That Stink. I fucking hate the smell of other people's books when you borrow a book. It has a smell that isn't yours. feels dirty. It feels like you've done something wrong. Kidnapping. Murder. It's worse when you buy a secondhand book. It is now your book. You now own this book. But it stinks of someone else. It reeks of it. All you want to do is crack it open and finger through its contents. But you can't. Because that awful foul stench. You have to keep it around for a while. Not too close. And hope that your stink can wash off the stink that was there before. It burns in your nostrils and you really want it, but you know you can't. You also put it out in the sun for a couple days. I even know people who put their books in the microwave. But then I would fear that smell would get in a cup of coffee I'm warming up. I stare across the room at a stinky book whose insides I want inside me immediately, you fucking tease. I will rip you to pieces from your spine. So that was fun. All right, well, um, I win the um, knowledge of knowing that I know how to search in my Scrivener file. Oh my God. But yeah, no, Shockey is the two time winner. And I just want to say that this is the first time that there's been a two time winner because this is the second one of these. Oh my gosh. So Shockey has to keep coming back no matter what. Even if Shockey doesn't want to be here, Shockey has to come back to defend title. That's just how it is. So, Shockey, you're stuck. You have to come back. Oh, my gosh. But definitely let me know. If you're going to force me, I guess. <laughs> I'm going to twist your arm. But definitely let me know if you have not got that. Because uh, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna have to start doing tracking numbers on everything. Okay. So, well, thank you guys so much for hanging out. And, um, again, we'll do this in, like, two weeks or something. Um and we will see how it goes. So thank you guys. I really appreciate you guys hanging out. Yay. Thank you.